get the start tonight. The former Stanford High School Bulldog here in Texas, a former state champion who won on this very diamond. It's Coco Woolley leading things off for the Aggies here in Austin tonight. Of course, Coco coming off second team all SEC performance last year, second team all region. Part of great consistency in that infield. There might be some question marks in the outfield, but you know what you have on the dirt this year in College Station. Yeah, for both of these teams, I feel like there's a lot of things that the coaches know what they have. And for Texas A&M, it's the infield. For Texas, it's their pitching staff. You know what you have returning. And so you're going to use that and rely on it and kind of help those parts of your game lead the way. And, of course, Sit Lolly, a big part of the pitching staff for Texas. It's Katie Stewart over at first. That is a fair ball. She'll get the tag applied. Let's take a look at the rest of this batting lineup tonight. For Texas A&M, Kennedy Powell about to step into the batter's box, followed by Jazz Hill, the top third of the order. I'm looking right at 2-3 in Kennedy Powell and Jazz Hill, two impact transfers for Coach Ford in the offseason. And I love that she stacks them at the top of the lineup. That's a statement to me. Yeah, Powell gives you a one-two punch. Both all-region honors in the top two spots of this lineup. Squares around. Let's see if we start seeing those corners start to cheat in a little bit. Unable to get the bunt down on the first try. I'm just talking to Coach Ford, she's very excited about what Powell's able to bring. And a big offseason pickup from UCLA has the ability to play a bunch of different positions. We'll see her in the infield, but can also play outfield and is a dynamic triple threat at the plate. She has home run power. We'll see her show slap, can also drag a bunt. For a game between two longtime Texas rivals, I feel like we're going to be talking a lot of Pac-12 tonight, including the UCLA Bruin <laughs> uh, transferring to A&M here. Yeah, there's a lot of flavor on this field for sure, with all the way down to the head coaches, to some transfers. And a certain color analyst as well. <laughs> so one out, nobody on. Gutierrez getting the starting nod tonight. A 2-0 ERA last year. She actually was the game one winner when these two teams met in the regional for the first of two meetings last year here in Austin. Texas A&M, of course, finished their season on this diamond. This series has been close over the years. It was dead even 22 wins apiece before they met last year in that regional here in Austin. Just got a piece of it to keep the count at two and two to Kennedy Powell from Sitlali Gutierrez. Last year, it was the sixth and seventh all-time meetings in the postseason alone between Texas and Texas A&M. And now they may not meet in regionals once they're both in the SEC, but super regional might not be out of the question. It's so true, you know, I was thinking about that with this matchup and with Texas moving over to the SEC next season. It, I think, to be honest, I think that would benefit both of these programs because not only are you wanting to be in the postseason, you're expecting to be in the postseason. You want to host, and of course, if you're not going to host and one of your rivals is going to be the host, you're probably going to end up in that regional. And so the fact that you're in the same conference, you won't be in the same regional. It's just kind of how the NCAA has done it over the years. They like to spread it out as they should. And I think that benefits both of these programs. I don't want to be playing Texas A&M if I'm Texas in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Supers, okay, we'll talk about supers when they come around. But. This will be the eighth pitch of this at bat with one out, nobody on, Kennedy Powell at the plate. So of course these two head coaches not only saw each other in last year's regional, as this one poked out towards left, Hayden Henry waiting. Able to haul it in to a win. It's a good at bat by Powell, resulting in an out. But you know, you know she's nervous, even though she's not a freshman. But it's a new team. She's put in the number two hole. Two. Saw a lot of pitches for her team. Going to go back into the dugout, feed some information. But those batters sometimes are the hardest to get rid of. With apologies to my All-American Wildcat, now we start digging into former Sun Devils, starting with Jazz Hill last year for the second time. All Pac-12 standout rejoining her former head coach a couple years later in College Station for this season. Yeah. When you look at the roster for AM, six transfers. This, to me, is the biggest one, even though she only has one year 
of eligibility left here to make an impact for Coach Ford coming over from Arizona State. She's an electric player. It's the energy that she brings defensively, offensively. She has that veteran presence about her. Struggled a little bit at times offensively last season for Arizona State, but in years past, man, she has lit it up. Helped win that Pac-12 title with the Sun Devils with Coach Ford. An instant boost to the lineup this year for the Aggies, trying to extend this inning with two outs. And as the count now one and two facing Gutierrez here in the first. And Sitlali's not messing around. 10 of her 14 pitches so far in the zone. Make it another. Most of her, her spin is going to be up spin. She kind of throws a rise, works up and down vertically, but throws her rise on different planes. Right now, we haven't really seen her elevate like she can. She's kind of keeping it down around the zone like you're talking about. 13 and 6 a year ago, including that win against Texas A&M. This one set for Ryan, back to the wall. Bella Dayton able to make the catch. Oh, it's just your ho-hum, three up, three down. Bella Dayton, back to the warning track, felt for the wall, hauls it in. The energy, you can feel it. I didn't know if it was going to hold. It does, Bella Dayton. That's a big out here in the first inning up against the warning track freshman campaigns uh, at Arizona. Seven newcomers for Texas this year, six freshmen. Just one transfer into the Longhorns dugout this year. Emily Kennedy gets the starting nod tonight here on the 40 Acres. This is the epitome of a power pitcher. The lefty brings the velo. She's going to go 70 plus, can touch 72 miles an hour. Ball gets on you quick. Saw her pitch a no hitter against 19th ranked Baylor in Waco last year. Later would have a combined no no in five innings against Prairie View AM. Texas saw her for four innings in relief in that game that Zilali Gutierrez won to give the Aggies their first of two losses here in Austin last spring. Uh, against the Longhorns, she would go four innings, allowing just one hit, walking a couple out of 15 batters space. A little bit bumpier ride when she came in relief in the second outing with the season on the line. Kind of found her stride late in the season with that relief type of role. I like that Coach Ford's giving her the start in the fall. Has the ability to be a pitcher that can throw a full seven, you bet. And so that's what fall ball's about. She started last season as a starter and then Coach Ford kind of said, you know, no, we need to have her as a reliever, different mentality. She obviously throws hard. She's one of the harder throwers in the country, and she kind of found her, her niche there. Wound up going 12-5 and five on the year with three saves, a 2.47 ERA. And Bella Dayton not doing her any favors there as the count now goes full to the leadoff hitter for the Longhorns. When she does get in trouble, it's just the location and sometimes can be, as pitchers we call it, effectively wild, so she can be around the zone at times. So you want to be very patient in the box like Bella Dayton. The payoff pitch. And it's a leadoff walk to Bella Dayton. In second, playing third base, number 10, Mia Scott. I think any coach in the country would like to have a Mia Scott. Last year, first team all Big 12 in her sophomore campaign, hitting 377. Most talented athlete that Mike White says he has ever coached. As Bella Dayton feigns a move down to second, but not going. You see that a lot with coaches when they're building their lineup. They want their, I don't know, most athletic player in that two spot. She was two for eight last year in the regional against Aggie pitching with a couple of runs and a stolen base. Bella Dayton had the leadoff walk on first. Scott at the plate with a 1-1 count facing tonight's starter, Emily Kennedy. As Scott inches ahead in the count, 2-1. 
three lefties at the top of this lineup. And of course, Kennedy, the lefty herself, she's really working that curve on the outside part of the plate, just trying to see how far she can get that pitch and kind of establish the strike here in the first inning. Can't get the bunt down, two and two. We'll just let people absorb this fact. There are current Texas A&M Aggies who were not alive the last time A&M did not make the NCAA postseason. It's been a model of consistency out there in College Station. Of course, Mike White, similar results with Texas, four straight years, making it at least to Super Regionals now. And all of a sudden, Emily Kennedy in danger of seeing the first two batters slip away. Trying to work an off-speed pitch there in a 2-2 count. That's a call that screams to me fall development. Trying to establish something that maybe wasn't in her arsenal a ton last season. Back to back, full count walks to Bella Dayton and now Mia Scott, two on. To lead off the first inning. Being third and playing shortstop, number 23, Vivi Martinez. Here's your top run producer last year, 52 RBI. True freshmen were your top three RBI producers for Texas last year. With two on, nobody out for Vivi Martinez. A great opportunity to give the Longhorns the opening advantage. Two runs batted in the sixth most productive season any Longhorn has ever had driving in teammates. What will she do for a sophomore encore? Coach White has said that she has absolutely just come out of her, sh her shell in year two and is more outgoing, more comfortable than maybe a shy freshman coming in. And of course, she had the opportunity to play with Team USA over the summer. So that's going to give you a little bit of confidence. And This will give the Longhorns the opening advantage tonight against the Aggies. Bella Dayton will score from second. Stop sign is up. It's an RBI double for Vivi Martinez. I think she's the owner of the left center gap. Every time I watch this young lady hit, this is where she hits it. And it's so pure and it's so beautiful. Sees the ball deep. Yeah, right there. That's her spot. Someone put her name out there in left center field. <laughs> you know, October softball is the time to tinker. Is this when you consider putting a 10th defender out there just to occupy that gap when Vivi comes to the plate? Try some different shifts. Gives way to Katie Stewart, part of this year's fantastic freshman class. Mike White venturing up to the land of Lincoln up there in Frankfurt, Illinois. And a little meeting with your battery, Julia Cottrell, the former Oklahoma State Cowgirl, now Texas A&M Aggie, talking to her pitcher. Yeah, talking to Coach White, he's very excited about the prospect of Katie Stewart. Said he was kind of founder, a little bit of a sleeper recruit, wasn't that, you know, highest rated recruit he's ever recruited, but didn't really matter to him because he saw what he needed to see. And so the ball just jumps off her bat. Two teammates in scoring position. Neither one will have a chance to go anywhere. Ryland Wiggins secures the first down of the inning, retiring the cleanup hitter for Texas. It was a good time out there from Cottrell to Kennedy. Just kind of calm her down a little bit, struggling to find the zone. Falling behind in the count, and I just love the fact that she answered with the strike, whether it's hit or not. Sometimes as a pitcher, like, let's just reset, find the zone, and attack. Gives way to Reese Satwood. Left side, what's the priority here? Play at the plate, need a tag, they'll get it. And they will happily trade the out, retiring Mia Scott. And the fielder's choice leaves two on for Texas with two away. They're going to run for Reese as 
Adea Wallace, the freshman over there on first. Again, the freshman out of Plano from Plano West Senior High School. Alyssa Washington trying to extend this inning. Texas has already staked a claim to a run on the RBI double from Vivi Martinez, now on third. The pitch is so tough. Can be the lefty going in 70 miles an hour in on the hands of a right-handed hitter. Washington working hard in the offseason, according to her head coach. We just saw her as a pinch runner in those two games against the AM and the regional. As she's in an 0-2 hole, chance for Emily Kennedy get it, to get out of this inning and bring those Aggie bats back to the plate. It'll be the middle third of the order due up for the maroon and white. The 0-2, right side, that's a fair ball. Martinez comes home, and they'll look to add a third run tonight, but getting caught up in the mud on the slide home will end the inning. Right, reaches out with the arm, she might get in. Day Wallace has four years to work on that slide. Yeah. Here is the aforementioned Julia Cottrell. Pride of Wichita. At her most recent collegiate stop. There's that 42 that her dad wore in high school and college. It'll be Cottrell, Perez, and Williams. The th four, five, and six hitters do up for Texas AM after Jazz Hill had that loud third out that Bella Dayton was able to squeeze in on the warning track at the wall. As Sitlali Gutierrez has faced just the minimum and has been staked to a two-run lead coming into the second inning now. Count a hold at 0-2 for Cottrell coming off a third-team All-American showing last year in her debut season with the Aggies. 23 extra base hits, including 10 home runs for the AM backstop. Again, the 0 2 from Gutierrez. Now, lazily, I assume a catcher at the plate sees the strike zone better than just about anybody. The best. Although I would argue sometimes center field. <laughs> I would always kind of, as a pitcher, I would turn to my center fielder, not only just kind of give myself a break from looking forward and just give her a little like, what do you think? What are you seeing out there? So those two, of course. Catcher, they're right there in it, but I always love and value the opinion of my center fielder out there. But so when that catcher grabs a bat and they go to the plate, did you see that pay off? Patience, especially a little bit of a tight zone here in the first inning early on. Plus, you always have the advantage of chit-chatting it up with the umpire. Where are, you, where are you liking it, Blue? Where's your zone tonight? Left side. That'll get past Martinez. Caden Henry will knock it down, send it back in. It's a leadoff single for Julia Cottrell. First hit of the game for Texas A&M. First base runner for the Aggies. Just a solid hitter in her senior season. Everywhere she's been, Florida, Oklahoma State, Texas A&M, she has hit the ball. She okay. seemed destined for Oklahoma State. That's where her grandfather won a golf national title. Had some other family ties there as well. The DP, Maya Perez. One of the new names for Texas A&M, the freshman. Aggies returned seven position starters. Four freshmen come in this year along with 10 newcomers total. Leaning a little bit heavier on transfers than Texas, who just brought in one standout from the ACC from Notre Dame and Jolie Mitchell. Well, big cut, but Gutierrez able to level the count one and one. You can see Perez kind of talk to herself, keep her head down. That was an outside pitch, righty on lefty. I like the I like the hat. I like the cut. Swing big. This is our first uh, AB in this type of a, a rivalry, in this type of a matchup. It seems like you're playing with house money tonight. You're in a rivalry. 
but you can still get to dabble a little bit. Yeah. And after we sign off tonight with the final score, both these teams will remember it. Some other folks might put it in their rearview mirror. Yeah, that's where it gets a little bit tricky, right? Because it is the rivalry. And I mean, you look at this crowd and people are here to watch this thing go down. Chance for two. Martinez cannot get it to the glove of Stewart. So Cottrell out at second. Perez will have a chance to run the bases with just one away. I mean, listen to this crowd. Listen to this place. They wanted that double play. They get this double play, and this crowd absolutely goes insane. Just a little bit wide on the throw there. Martinez coming across the bag. I think if there's a clean throw, they have this double play. And maybe just this stretch from Katie Stewart, that's a freshman at first base. She was a little bit pre-committed. I think if you sit back, and you see where that throw is before you have that big stride, then you're able to adjust your stride, go a little bit more to your right. So just some things to kind of clean up, figure it out. Maya Perez was never happier to see an orange base. So one on, one out. As Keely Williams out of the six hole will bring her bat to the plate. She's got a decent contingency here tonight. They were tailgating out beyond center field before filing in. Runner going. It's a nice throw. Just can't get the tag in time. Reese Atwood gave Martinez a chance to make it close. But Perez in scoring position. Atwood, she has a cannon of an arm, but there was a little bit of a hesitation there. You could see her in her squat down, and then her eyes realized that uh, there was a runner on the go, and I think that's our first look at Savvy Price as a pinch runner, sneaking in there. It's really hard to see the numbers, I'm gonna be honest, with the white on the white. It's testing my my eyesight. <laughs> yeah, there, a few numbers changed just prior to the game. And we're being told that's Kramer Ushte. There we go. Kramer has a sister currently here at Texas, McGee, her mom with a diploma from University of Texas as well. Uh, she was a high school All-American there in Brenham, right there in the backyard of College Station. Yeah, part of that six transfers that Coach Ford was able to bring over in the offseason. And the first free pass. Allowed by Silali Gutierrez as Williams will make it two Aggies on the base pass. Batting seventh and playing first base, number 13, Amari Pepper. Some new maroon blood added to this Aggie program this year. Yeah, there's some big names here from big programs. We talked about Jazz Hill. And of course, Emily Levitt, she was there a season ago, so you get another round of her and the development under Coach Ford, who does work with the pitchers and calls the pitches, and then Kennedy Powell, Savannah Price, and Brooke Vestal, haven't mentioned her, her yet, coming over from SEC country at Ole Miss, adding another arm to the trio of returners for Texas A&M, so really have the luxury of a veteran staff, and then you add Vestal to the mix. One out. That's a double play to get out of the inning. Alyssa Washington, cool under the spring. Let's be clear. Unless it's fall Unless softball. Unless it's fall ball. Yeah. You got it. We're on the same page. Yeah, no, it feels like spring to me right now. It's so weird. I feel like I'm in another dimension. Nobody's ever flown into Austin, <laughs> Texas in October and said it feels like spring to me. If you were here two weeks ago, Ooh. you would not have had that sentiment. It's like so nice outside. We've got like some flannels in attendance. It's just like perfect atmosphere. Here's the junior, Katie Simmas, for the Longhorns. It's the bottom third of the order due up for the first time for Mike White. The junior, a former state champion at Atascacita. Just saw one pinch hitting opportunity against the Aggies back in the regional. Coco Woolley, one away. Well, Kenzie, uh, when we talk about the future home of Texas, I'm going to say last year was a down year for the SEC. Only 12 of the 13 teams made it to the NCAA tournament. We've seen years where the full Baker's dozen made it into the dance. You bet. And Alabama, Tennessee, of course, making their runs to the World Series. Texas was 
in the re or the super regional against Tennessee and just came up a little bit short. Of course, Tennessee with those, those pitchers and they were hitting the ball so well. And the offense for Texas just struggled a little bit, but when I say struggle, it's just Tennessee's pitching was that good. And despite how challenging the SEC was last year, the eight and m program won five of their eight SEC weekends for the first time in a decade. And completely overachieved. I said that in the open. I'm going to say it again. For year one, you don't really have any expectations. You're taking over a program that Coach Ford is. Of course, Joe Evans, one of the most iconic coaches in our game. But the way that they were able to just kind of get right back with the snap of the, of the fingers, get right back into the rankings within a month or two was so impressive. That ball appeared to hit Maloney a second time, but you'll see simply a foul ball because of where the ball lands. Ashton last year's second team all Big 12. What was her redshirt freshman campaign? She probably had one of the better success stories against Aggie pitching in that regional last year, going three for five with a walk, RBI, and a run scored. This is your eight hole hitter. A 382 hitter last year. With 17 RBI out of the Show Me State. Second inning of work for the Aggie starter, Emily Kennedy. 2 2, punched to shallow left, it gets down for the single. One on, one out. That's tough for Emily Kennedy because you feel like you sawed off a hitter here as a pitcher. Look where this location is. It's great. It's in tight on the hands, but because of the velocity that she provides, Maloney doesn't have to do anything. She just needs to put bat on the ball and find just enough of the grass out there and shallow left for a single. All right, Caden Henry has this infield guessing with Maloney over there on first. Will she square around? As you already saw the third baseman Powell cheating up into your screen there. And another foul ball. Count goes one and one here. To the nine hitter Henry. A lot of things they can do here. I'm just kind of taking this at bat in. This is a freshman who Coach White is very excited about. Her talent has a ton of speed. Shows bunt. Next pitch goes slap. Put Maloney in motion over there at first base. She's got some speed of her own. Mike White drew a lot of favorable comparisons to Mia Scott. Loves her speed. Of course, Mike White uh, at the end of the year is hoping everybody is a nice balance of both power and running ability. The one two to the nine hole hitter. They'll do it again. It's just so impressive to me when you can watch a hitter do three different things in at bat. She's shown bunt, she's shown slap, and now she's swinging away with two strikes. <laughs> and as a freshman, to have the, the mentality of I'm okay to show this, that's impressive. Sometimes that gets too much for hitters, and you want to try and simplify it instead of doing all three in that bat. Okay, let me just do, do a drag here once, and I'll go to my slap. Got her looking. First strike out of the night for Kennedy, now 2 one Lefty on lefty, working the curve. She's going up, and she's going away. Got the pitch location here. Might have been a ball off, but two strikes. All right, back to the top of the Texas order where Emily Kennedy walked both Bella Dayton and Mia Scott on full counts. Bella would go on to score before the end of last inning, the first of two runs to cross the plate for Texas. Can she extend this inning with two away? And just Maloney, the base runner on first. Oh, that almost found a gap off the middle, and the speed of Dayton will keep the inning going. Ryland Wiggins was going to cover first if needed, had to backtrack to keep that ball in the infield. Go, 
I don't know if this was a hit and run or just a steal and B Bella Dayton was choosing to slap on it, but this is speed causing chaos. And it's just a simple ground ball that Texas A&M cannot record an out out of just because of pure speed on the base path. Fourth hit for Texas, gives way to Mia Scott. First pitch she sees, chance for the Aggies to get out of the inning. Woolley underneath it, Longhorns will strand a pair. Mike White's Longhorns in the driver's seat with two runs on four hits thus far. He's about to make a pitching change. We'll have more on that in just a moment, but we're now joined by the 60 year head coach, Mike White. And Mike, coming into this fall, uh, I know you probably, like every other coach around the country, had a lot of questions about your team. Have any of them been answered so far? Well, a little bit. I mean, obviously, this is um, you know real velocity we're seeing right now. So I think she's hitting the 70, you know, so it's pretty good. And we're not being, we're not striking out. We're putting the ball in play, and we're doing a lot of good things so far. So I also like the way Sid Lally handled the first couple of innings. Coach, what kind of opportunity is this for your team to get this kind of a match? Of course, the rivalry, but the crowd, just the energy yeah. for fall. Absolutely. It's a good crowd here tonight. There's a lot of people watching. So it's uh, you know got the energy going and, and that's fun. That's what this game's about. Yeah, Mike always appreciate your time Best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you hook him He nailed that hook him in year one And all he's done since then is rewrite some expectations here on what had already been a successful Softball program four straight super regionals now a little over a year removed from their first ever finalist performance in Oklahoma City and he'll be leading them into the SEC next year. That was crazy. I was looking at my notes and kind of updating the years, and it said six, going into the sixth season. I said, no way. There's no way. I was talking to him earlier this week. I said, does it feel like it's flown by? And he goes, oh, yeah. I feel like I'm on the treadmill. <laughs> Love that. It's just it's, it's happened so quickly, and, of course, the success, and we saw this team make that amazing, magical run to the championship game two seasons ago in the Women's College World Series, and... If you know Coach White, he's going to play in a super. So it's going to be a success here in Austin. And it's been fun to watch him put his stamp on this program. This is Ryland Wiggins out of the eight spot, batting for the first time, facing the new pitcher Estelle Check for Texas. After Gutierrez got the start, went the scheduled two innings. Look for the infield for Texas A&M. I'm talking about this because Wiggins at the plate, your second baseman tonight, but she was your starter on the hot corner every single game last year. So Check, one of the senior leaders in the circle this season. The 2-2 from Check. As Wiggins, her first three years for Texas A&M, started in three different spots around the infield, but your infield was absolutely settled over there in College Station. They played 56 games. Wiggins, Woolley, and Harper all started 56 of them. At third, short, and second. And Trinity Cannon at first started all but one game. So what does Trisha Ford do tonight? Just throws their names into a hat, sends them out there in the infields, wherever they'd like. And it's a luxury to have as a coach when you have maybe a player that's missing and you know someone, a starter that you'd be expecting to play, just throw someone else out and plug in and here we go. Payoff pitch, pays off for Estelle Check, strikes out the first batter she sees. She's going to work the curve, and then she's also going to work the off-speed curve with two strikes here. It's going to slows it down a little bit, and you can see out in front where Wiggins was on the front side. It is an electric pitch, especially your first outing. Big-time strikeout. Elliot Wright will charge in this one back towards the wall. Dayton's already made one catch, make it two at the fence. Two away. You know, it's so interesting. We've had two big time catches in center field for Bella Dayton. And both times that the ball's been deep in the ballpark, there's been no wind. And so between innings, the wind will pick up a little bit. But every time she's been tested out there, the wind just kind of dies. And so I think that's advantage Texas. Maybe they're controlling the weather a little bit. I don't know. It's just kind of funny how that's been working. Estelle Check has retired the first two batters she's faced. A strikeout and a long out number two. Gives way to the top of the order for AM with Coco Woolley. Woolley grounded out to the right side back in the first inning. Shows bunt and did not pull the bat back in time. The strike called. Texas AM has been very aggressive early in the count. 
trying to extend this inning, a slow roller. And that is the speed of somebody who had six triples last year and an inside the park home run, Coco Woolley. You can tell they're just trying to work the dirt, especially now turning it over to the top of the lineup to speed the lefties with Woolley and then Powell to follow. Just out in front, and if Estelle Check can't pick this up, nobody's going to. There's only one shot at that play. She just runs way too well down the line. All right, just like that, tying run is at the plate. Kennedy Powell. Flight out to left, back in the first. Can't get the bunt down on the first try. Your freshman year at Arizona, you were a two-way player. You swung the bat. If you couldn't get the bunt down on the first try, what, what did you feel like your success rate was like after that? <laughs> Honestly, I felt like I had, had a better chance because I saw a pitch. I always like, give me another one, coach. Runner going. Oh, a brilliant throw, but again, Coco Woolley, after her infield single, has herself a stolen base. Reese Atwood could not put any more on this one. And just the, the pitch location doesn't help her. Looks like they're going to call her out on Left leaving early. Left the base early. And that will end the top of the third. Estelle Check came in. Action from everyone. Of course, Levitt, the junior, the transfer from Minnesota in her second year for Texas A&M. Has a jumpy rise. We'll see her throw a curve to both sides of the plate. Also has a changeup that she can just really throw at any count. And I like the, the counter. If you're going to utilize your whole staff, you kind of saw the same thing from Texas, but just reverse. You go righty to lefty and two different types of pitchers. If you're going to utilize multiple pitchers, you don't want to throw back-to-back -back similarity or same looks. You want to try and mix it up a little bit. Oh, an offering in there for a strike. First time we saw Emily Levitt here at McCombs Field. She was still up there in Big Ten country with Minnesota. Went on to be all Big Ten freshman squad or transferring to Texas A&M. That was one of those busy weekends where Texas was hosting Minnesota, Drake, and Nichols. Not that Drake. <laughs> the Bulldogs. Big Schaefer, I think, was hosting Drake last I saw on social media a couple weeks ago. <laughs> a lot of people checking out the new Moody Center. Vivi Martinez, all she's done so far is one for one, a double, an RBI, and a run scored. Got ahead early and then tried to go to the changeup away. Martinez not biting and then tries to counter that with something high and in. Just not pinpoint location. And now you find yourself 2-2, two -two, which kind of means the count's a little bit more even. You had the advantage 0-2, now it's anyone's game. Three, four, and five hitters do up for Texas, facing the first reliever, Levitt. Now we were talking about Mike White, what he's seen so far. They're getting good contact. We've only seen a total of three swings from the Longhorns not get a piece of the ball. The 2-2 two -two to Vivi. Texas have been a little bit more patient offensively, taking more pitches, kind of seeing some things early versus Texas A&M where they've been swinging earlier in the count. Just very aggressive mindset. So again, Levitt, the first batter she's facing. Vivi Martinez, this is the seventh pitch. Longhorns found both of their runs in the home half of the first. And Martinez is taking a couple tight. She has such a calm demeanor, even when there's some chin music coming her way. Doesn't even flinch at all. Just kind of stands in there, knows where she needs to be. Just looks so comfortable. This is what you strive for as a hitter. You just strive for comfort and, and feeling yourself without trying to force it. it. Takes a lot of training to get to that point. Nobody on, nobody out. The payoff pitch. Right side, that will get through. Vivi Martinez is two for two. Just a veteran at bat. 
you fall behind 0-2 and there's no panic. And so that's where that calm comes First in. Season, when you have a calm demeanor and you have, of course, the ability to mash the way that she does, that's when you find yourself in the elite group. And that's why she played with Team USA this summer, because that's what kind of hitter that she has become and is continuing to grow into. Katie Stewart's getting the start tonight defensively at first, so we're not going to see much of that cannon arm that Mike White's been talking about, but we are seeing the versatility she provides. And look, you feel like your roster is almost twice as big when you have that kind of defensive versatility. You can make adjustments based on the pitching matchups and minimize your substitutions. Yeah, he has a deep roster. He says it might be the deepest roster that he's had here at Texas, and you know, definitely going to still have a lot of positions that are open going into February, so giving a lot of different players the opportunity to prove themselves, and you get a start, show me what you got. I would love to know what a freshman out of Illinois knows about the Longhorn-Aggie <laughs> rivalry, because I was listening to some recent interviews with some of the newer Aggie players, and they were already referencing that orange team, and that was about as far oh. as they would go with their comments. There you go. I feel like it's once you get a football season under you, it's like, okay, got it. The 0-2 up the middle. What a snag and a chance to turn two. Got it. Wow. Rylan Wiggins back to playing second base for the first two outs of the inning. Well, we were just talking about what a defensive stud that she's been her entire career for Texas A&M, playing shortstop, third base, second base. This is a huge catch. This is a postseason type of catch that we're making here in October. A little bit of a misstep on the very first step, but it doesn't matter. Her athleticism recovers. She reads it so well, and when she jumped, it was right at the right time. Shades of Janae Jefferson, something the Longhorn fans saw plenty of for several years there at second base. Yeah, Wiggins, every start at third last year. Back to second base tonight. No doubt by opening day, she'll be in the pitching circle. I feel like she's one of those players where she's got to try and get every single position down at least for an inning or something. Maybe an at-bat, make her way around the field. Do a little Buster Posey-esque type of thing. <laughs> Reese Atwood just pulls that one left of the bag. Although if you ask her though, she may say I don't leave the infield. I just this yeah. I work the dirt. Again, first inning of work for Emily Levitt in the circle. And after a leadoff single to Vivi Martinez, there are no base runners to think about now after the double play turned by Wiggins. Katie Stewart just try, or pardon me, Reese Atwood just trying to extend this inning. What a run that was last year for Reese. It's one thing to have three walk-offs in a season. In a career, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> but due to lack of originality, she just kept doing it one game after another. So we'll hang up there, Enright coming in, but guess who? The third inning belonged to the leather of Ryland Wiggins. Well, this one was a little bit more exciting than that last pop-up. A little bit of a drop step, and then the can It'll be the two, three, and four hitters do up for the Aggies, who have no runs on a couple of base hits tonight. One hit off of each of the two pitchers they've seen, and Gutierrez and Check from the Longhorns. And back to your all-region standout, Kennedy Powell. Got the bunt down. Well executed. A freshman in the circle defending her position. First batter she faces gets the out. And this is something that you work on at practice every single day as a pitcher and getting the bunt and having to lead your defender, your second baseman. And as a freshman, sometimes this throw is a little bit hard. You have to kind of figure out how to be slow with it, trust that your team's going to be there, and made it look easy. Back to Jazz Hill, who had that deep out to center back in the first inning. And ultimately, Lolly Gutierrez got the Aggies 1-2-3. Aggies twice a day have had warning track power for some loud outs. Woo. So you 
You've got the grad student at the plate and the true freshman in the circle. Here in a two-run ball game in the top of the fourth. I like the rise that I'm seeing right away from the, the rookie in the circle. It's got some jump to it. Back when Jazz was a freshman, one of the best freshman years statistically in the nation back in 2020. 37 home runs now in her career. 137 RBI on that resume, a 318 hitter. But last year, a little bit of a down year, a 220 campaign. Still able to conquer seven outfield walls with that bat. This was all the way back in the first inning with two outs. Or part As here in the fourth, a big cut. And she's down on strikes, two up, two down. I'm telling you, I like this rise ball. Jumping through the zone, you can tell she's feeling good about it. You strike out the number three batter against the rivalry. Watch this ball go through the zone here and where it starts. It's got a little bit of tail to the left as well. A little bit of curve to it, but she's just throwing it on different planes. This will have a chance to get down in front of Dayton. It's a two out base hit for Julia Cottrell. So she extends the inning here in the fourth. Brings the tying run to the plate in just a moment for Texas A&M. See if they run for Cottrell, they will. This is Haley Golden. Designated hitter number 26, Maya Perez. Coming in to run at first base for Texas A&M number nine, Haley Golden. Golden played her high school ball in Perlin, just south of Houston. Perez reached on that fielder's choice back in the second inning. It's got some zip on it as well. Velocity is my pitching radar saying upper 60, 68 miles an hour. Just it seems very natural too. She's got a very loose arm. Jared Arrington's our home plate umpire. And looking for back-to-back -back base hits into the shallow outfield. As you've got two Aggies aboard with two outs. Golden down to second. Perez joins her, at least for now. Left fielder number 18, Keely And that makes way for the San Antonio native. And Keely Williams out of Cibolo, Texas, went to Converse Judson High School. Last year as a freshman, a 307 hitter as she faces the new arm for Texas, Tegan Cavan, who retired the first two batters. Winning at first base now for Texas and a number 19 scout level. Scout Lavelle will be one of the two pinch runners out there now for the Aggies. She represents the tying run on first. This could be trouble. Diving effort cannot make the catch. Aggies have pulled within one. It's an RBI base hit for Williams. Golden able to come home to score. Perez goes from first to third. This pitch just hangs a little bit too low from Kavan, diving effort out there in center field from Bella Dayton, just right underneath her glove. I think if she extends a little bit more forward versus laterally, maybe has a better chance at that, but great effort. And a little bit of action here. I like this pressure and this moment for a freshman. This is where Coach White wants to see how you respond. Aggies are quietly having a nice night with two outs. I don't recommend it too often, but they've come through. It's the fourth straight batter this inning with two outs. Already a run to show for it. The 0 1 to Amari Harper, not tempting. Harper last year again among those 
everyday starters in the infield when she was your second baseman every game. She had a way of drawing uh, some pitches. She was hit by pitch 10 times last year. Go on to be third team all region. As a middle infielder for the Aggies. She faces Tegan Cavan here facing her sixth batter of the inning. And there's that elusive second out, but not before the Aggies strike for the first time tonight. The RBI, of course, made it to her third Olympic Games in Tokyo a couple years ago. On behalf of the red, white, and blue. Yeah, Jennifer McFalls, before she got the job at Kansas, was an assistant coach right here for Connie Clark in the Longhorns. Yeah, she's doing big things at Kansas. Has kind of, you know, taken a page out of Coach Ford's book and what Coach White had to do six years ago, where you have to kind of put your stamp on something and rebuild a program. Second inning of work for Emily Levitt. Past the diving glove of Powell. And it's a leadoff base hit for Alyssa Washington. She gets to run the bases for the first time tonight. Designated hitter number 44, Katie Simmons. Here we go, Katie. Katie Simmons led off back in the second inning, over one today with a ground out. See what she can do here with a teammate on the base pass. Longhorn leadoff hitters have reached in three of these first four innings now. But their only two runs came in that first. And again, this highlights one difference between these two programs right now. You still see the wristbands we're familiar with for the Aggies, whereas Texas has already adopted the one-way communication. I was just going to say, it looks like Texas A&M is still using the, the OG, but not really that OG because I didn't use it when I played, but it's been a custom in our game for about the last decade or so. And you see the, the matrix on the wristband where you look at the sign, and sometimes it can get confusing and get lost with what the number was. Just want to make sure you clear up that communication. Well, this is a tough shot. They'll still get the lead out. Coco Woolley to the glove of Wiggins in time to retire Washington. Simmons on on the fielder's choice. Right we highlighted this seven. a couple weeks ago in the Longhorns last game here on Longhorn Network, but they and a lot of teams around the country now have these one-way communication devices. The coach can send in on a buzzer to a smart device for the pitcher and catcher to look at to help speed up the ball game. I'm very excited for this new rule. College baseball has been utilizing it for the, I think, past two seasons. And so I've been kind of waiting to see when it would trickle into our game. It finally has. And so I'm excited to see how and which teams choose to utilize it. Of course, you have to remember these things cost money and investment, and you have to be smart about what you as, as your team can afford in the budget and that all goes into it but just the fact that it's allowed and we can kind of start to progress that way and of course you take a look at the other things that are added for this upcoming 24 year we've the, are, we've already seen the double first base in effect yeah. for player safety pitchers can disengage that would affect you on the rubber in the circle that doesn't mean yep. anything goes you don't get to replant but it does reduce the number of illegal pitches just for not bringing that drag foot across the rubber. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about this and kind of explaining it, especially as a former pitcher myself, the difference between disengaging, the leaping versus the crow hopping. What does this all mean? I can just s simplify it very much to say that I don't personally think that it m will make a difference in our game. I think pitchers are too explosive now to try and control if you're leaping one inch or if you're leaping a foot. I don't think it makes a difference, and we weren't really seeing it called correctly, I think, just because it is a judgment call. So you 
alleviate that from the umpire's judgment. You let them focus on one less thing. But the difference is we cannot have crow hopping. And crow hopping is when you're going to see a player turn sideways and replant. So you can see Levitt right there. She is completely on the dirt. So just because the rule says you can doesn't mean you have to. And it's not good for every pitcher to say, oh, just because it says I can leave, I'm going to, because that's not how I do it. Adea Wallace is your pinch runner. She'll move down to scoring position. And now a generous rounding of second. She's in a pickle. Safe at second, but you've got two runners on the bag. And now a chance to maybe erase them both. And Wallace and another jam is out. It's all good for the Aggies. Able to execute. For those of you scoring at home, this is when you tear up your scorecard. <laughs> and there was nothing she could do at home plate. Just watch her teammates run back and forth, back and forth. All right, our boy Kurt is showing off. If you are scoring at home, we'll, we've got questions. But here's one answer. It's a 9 6 5 4 3 3 6 5 4 double play. It sounds like um, you're reciting pie. Is yeah. that what it just sounded like? <laughs> 3.1415. This is number 15, Mayor Usher. Well, I can tell you that both teams are going to go home and watch some film on that one. For Texas, what went wrong base running? Because the first thing was that Wallace broke a little bit too early. Okay, you get out of the pickle, you're safe at second base. And then Maloney was going back. Wallace should have just stayed. You don't want to make two errors in the same breath as a base runner. You just want to be happy with being safe. Ushte, the former Raging Cajun, retired facing Kavan. One away here in the top of the fifth. Aggies found their only run just last inning. Here's your nine hole hitter, Ali Enright. A pop out to center over one tonight. Right, last spring in the regional, one for three with an RBI and a walk. Wrapped up the season hitting 210 with four home runs in her first year since coming over from Arizona. The 2 0 from Caban. Here's what I love. Admission was free tonight, and we have seen almost 900 people take advantage of that. But we still see fans who their favorite spot is just leaning over that outfield wall. That's where they are accustomed to taking in all the memorable moments here on the 40 acres in the spring. They wouldn't have it any other way with that vantage point here tonight. Keegan Cavan, the third pitcher used tonight for Mike White, following. Gutierrez in check. The 3-1. They'll do it again, full count. I've seen Kavan try and go to an off-speed pitch a couple of times. You can tell it's something that's still developing for her. She's throwing that rise, starting it in the zone, working it low, and then getting ahead, letting it run a little bit higher. The reason I say that is because I'm thinking change up in this count right now. And so if it's not a pitch that you're super comfortable with, you're not going to throw it. But again, this is fall. This is a time to try it and see what you can get away with and see what you're confident with. She has struck out the last two batters she has faced. One out here in the fifth. And well hit, pulled into left. Henry will knock it down. It'll be a one out single for Allie Enright. And will turn the lineup over for Texas A&M. Just sitting really nicely on this pitch that's up in the zone and gets on top of it. So smooth right there. Watch her, her level swing. Look at her hands. You draw a line from her head down to her belly button. She's just stacked. Not trying to do too much there, especially with the ball that's going up. Well, let's see if Coco Woolley can redeem herself for what's been a ho-hum night so far here uh, against Texas. But a, a double play turned, uh, a couple of others. Robbed of base hits. 
Coco in the leadoff spot for the Aggies again. Tonight, one for two offensively. No doubt a fan favorite. A throw behind the runner in right. That's the right idea there from Atwood. That's exactly when you want to pick when a runner's at first base and the batter showing sacrifice bunt. That's usually when you're going to get a generous lean. Just the throw and the catch wasn't executed. Woo. Count two and one to Woolley. Kennedy Powell on deck. Woolley, the third batter of this inning. Following up Hallie Enright, who's singled with one away, still standing on first. <laughs> and Caban able to level up the count, two and two. It's a rise. It's down in the zone, right around the knees. It's got up movement, and you see that as a hitter. You kind of give up on it because it's low in the zone, and then it just broke right up at the last second. Two away. Well, get ready for a top 25 matchup over at Gregory Gym on Friday, October 27th. Texas will host Baylor. Longhorns are the defending national champions and are looking for another title this year. Baylor against number six, Texas, October 27th, 7 p.m. Central. Catch all the action right here on Longhorn Network. Jared Elliott's women have just gotten done with a six-match Big 12 stretch where all six wins were against top 25 opponents. By the time they're done with Baylor, that will be eight out of nine teams on their Big 12 slate in the top 25. Texas Volleyball at the moment against TCU. And Jason Williams is squad up there in Fort Worth down 0-2. Has won the last two sets looking for the reverse sweep. Up the middle, what a stab! And a fun way to end the inning when it's all said and done. Alyssa Washington extends, touches the bag. And that's your top of the two to one ball game here in the bottom of the fifth. Your new pitcher for the Aggies, Shaley Ackerman, out of that far off land of Arizona. We saw her get the start in that, what would be final game of the year last year for the Aggies against Texas. Longhorns would quickly find four runs before the Aggies would secure an out. And on the season, a 2.37 ERA. Closing hitters hit 204 against her. We talked about the six new transfers that Coach Ford brought in. Of course, you also have the four freshmen, but I feel like maybe the biggest recruit in the offseason was to get Ackerman to come back for her fifth season. That's a big... Big decision and you know you can't always assume that these athletes have one more year in them and she said yeah I got one more and she was I would say the ace of the team last season a lot of innings and just looks like a senior strikes out the freshman Kaden the Henry Brings the veteran presence and she paints the corners. She's pretty simple to be honest with you. She just kind of works side to side, will throw a change up at any count, has good velocity behind her stuff, tight spin. And it's just the presence that she brings. She used to swing a bat as well in the early years. Yeah, good athlete. So back to the top of the order, Bella Dayton. Bella tonight, a walk, a run scored, and a single as well. As your top spot in this lineup. Tight, one and one. In spring of 2025, will it be in Austin or will it be in College Station when these two teams collide for three straight days in an SEC weekend?
Aggies this year of their eight SEC weekends. Seven of them will be against NCAA tournament teams. They have to go to Tuscaloosa to take on a Crimson, side, Crimson Tide squad that made it all the way to Oklahoma City. Dayton right back at Ackerman. 2-1. I just like the fact that both of these coaches, you know, you put away, or put aside the the rivalry, and you know some some coaches may say, no, I don't want to do that in the off season. We want to save it for in season, or I don't want to give an extra look. Well, both of these these coaches know what kind of schedule that they have waiting for them come February on both sides. Very strong schedules. Texas will be playing UCLA in the first couple of weeks, playing at Clearwater. And if you have the ability to say, hey, Coach Ford, or hey, Coach White, what do you think? We get together in October and throw it around a little bit, and you know everything's cool, and we can keep it civil? Yeah, let's do it, because it's only going to benefit all of our athletes. And you cannot do this in practice. You cannot replicate this atmosphere. You can't go up against your rival. and. Of course, both of these teams have the ability to be ranked in the top 25. So you're talking about a rivalry top 25 matchup for practice to better ourselves, to go watch film, to go back to practice next week and say, OK, what did we what did we need to work on? What did we learn when we were facing Emily Kennedy? What did we learn when we were facing Vivi Martinez? Let's watch that base running clip a little bit. OK, let's wrap it out a little bit in practice here. Jolie Mitchell at the plate for Texas. Her first chance to swing a bat tonight. The transfer from Notre Dame, standout in the ACC, the only transfer who was brought into the program this year. And she has two years of eligibility remaining, including this spring. She bats in the two hole in place of Mia Scott. Coco Woolley. Middle of the infield has been solid for the Aggies. They get a three up, three down inning with Ackerman in the circle in the fifth. Those are two upperclassmen getting it done. I'm worried, though, the folks in Bristol, if we start trending with hashtag SC top 10, I know. they're, they're going <laughs> to say, this can't be right. Softball in October. <laughs> when I said that, I was like, oh, but hey, let's shoot for the stars. You know, see what happens. Throw it out there. It's a brand new battery for Texas. Sophia Simpson in the circle as Katie Stewart behind the plate now. After getting the start over at first base. Jazz Hill 0 for 2 tonight. She was the victim of the first potential highlight defensive play we saw back in the first inning. Is why they put a screen on the front of the dugouts here at McCombs. <laughs> two two from Simpson. Talking to Mike White, who of course. Uh, is extra involved with the pitchers despite adding a new full-time pitching coach this year and Patty Ruth Taylor but with Simpson he and uh, Sophia working on the fact needed a pitch other than the change but certainly she doesn't have to worry about her rise ball one of the best moving rise balls on the staff that one just fought foul count remains full as when you bring in Patty Ruth Taylor, that means a coach gets to be in that bullpen right up until the start of the ball game and just lets you keep an eye out on a few quirks. Anything arises with your pitcher right before the ball game, able to address them if needed. Yeah. 3 2 to Hill. That's an easy take for ball four. 
Well, we talked about what the SEC is going to evolve into. Big 12, there's been a whole lot of moving and shaking. This is what you know to be the Big 12 for the past decade. This year, we've already injected a couple sets of Cougars, some Knights and Bearcats. And then, oh, by the way, Tucson, the land of Kenzie Fowler, is about to become Big 12 country along with those rivals, the Sun Devils, former stomping ground for Trisha Ford before she took the job with A&M. And, well, the whole state of Utah, it seems like, along with yep. Colorado. I feel like I need to save that map and study it a little bit. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of change for everyone and just this landscape of sport of softball next year. We're about to find out pretty soon if Deion Sanders has daughters who play softball. Hey, I've been calling for a program at Colorado for I don't even know how long, probably before I played at Arizona. You always have the biggest tournament of the year recruiting wise in Colorado and we'd always go. This one's playable for your new first baseman tonight. That's Ryan Brown underneath it. Every time we'd go to Colorado, I would look around and we're playing and it's so beautiful in the summer and I'm going, why don't they play softball here? I mean, they do, of course, Colorado State, but the this state, the University of Colorado does not have a softball program. So who knows what's in the future because if anything we know now is things can change and they can change very quickly. So again, the leadoff walk to Hill, we have since seen the foul out. The first out this inning, here's Maya Perez with one on, one out. Tying run is on the base pass for Maya. Boy, the freshman could have a moment here against uh, that burn orange team. Here we go, guys. Just thinking, what I do know is that going into this season, I feel like this is going to be a very sentimental year for a lot of different programs and different conferences. And there's gonna be a lot of, this is the last this, this is the last that, before things change dramatically, all the way from the Pac-12 to the Big 12 to the SEC. And so, I don't know, it's just one of those years where I'm gonna to have to really like take in a lot of matchups. Be interesting. Two under Perez, as the runner moves down and I'm not sure if Katie Stewart was trying to get some interference on the batter. But ultimately, you're going to have a runner in scoring position. That's the tying run now in the form of Jazz Hill. Hill reading this in the dirt, and it just looks like Stewart went to throw it, and then she meant to hold on yeah. to it, but the decision is too late. By that time, you've already <laughs> well into your throw. Yeah, just tried to slam on the brakes and the ball didn't behave. We talked about uh, everybody sad that it might be the last. Of course, Texas and A&M went through that several years ago yeah. when A&M moved to the SEC. And they'll be reunited in the spring of 2025. Again, the payoff pitch, tying run on second. Now the go-ahead runner aboard as well, Maya Perez gets to run the bases for a third time. It's a great at bat by a freshman. Very patient, saw a lot of pitches. They will run for her. That is an important run. I believe this is Ashte once again. Coming in to run at first base for Texas A&M, number 15, Kramer Ashte. And Ashte is one of two former Raging Cajuns along with Kylie Griffin on the Aggie team this year. They made it to that Seattle Super Regional this past spring against Washington. Probably the most dramatic regional <laughs> that I've ever seen. Well, for those of you who are uh, playing a game of two screens to watch softball and volleyball, Longhorns, I'm gonna pause for a moment in case you, you prioritize softball and don't want the spoiler for volleyball. Jared Elliott's women with the reverse sweep, able to win it in five. Whoa. That was the one non-top 25 matchup. Jason Williams has done a fantastic job up there in Fort Worth with that volleyball program after being the longtime assistant in Waco with Baylor. Baylor Bears now are next up for Texas. A reverse sweep in volleyball is like one of the most electric things in sport. It's just 
I don't know how to describe it. It's the momentum shift from going down 0-2 to have to winning three in a row and just watching. I feel like it's more of a collapse of the other team than anything, but I just feel like it's one of those electric things in all sport. 0-2 to Williams will short hop its way home. Last time Williams was up, the RBI single that brought home Golden, the only run so far for the Aggies, and is back in the top of the fourth inning. And this inning, your new catcher and Katie Stewart behind the plate. Simpson in the circle. This one's fouling out of play. Count will hold at 1-2. Regular season form, though, in the crowd. Yeah. We've seen some gloves from some young in, youngins all around. You know, somebody just threw up their popcorn bucket trying to catch it in that, but whatever works. Aggies with a tying run in scoring position. And a possible lead for the first time tonight in the form of Ashte over on first. Both of the runners reached via walks. Williams trying to join them here with a 2-2 count and just one out. Yeah, she knew it. But it was a little too late. Two away. 2-2 count. Simpson pulls the string. This is her pitch. It's the go-to. This is her spot just a little bit. You can see where Simpson or where Stewart was set up behind the dish. Wanted it outside. It drifts a little bit in, but sometimes it doesn't matter as a changeup. What matters is the change of speed. As long as you fool the hitter, that all you care about is the pitcher. So all of a sudden now two outs for Amari Harper out of the seventh spot in this lineup. We've seen her ground into a double play and strike out. This is Simpson now, the pitcher for Texas. Base is loaded for the Aggies here in the sixth inning. And the tying run is just 60 feet away. Three free passes, three base runners. Second baseman, Ryland Williams. And for Ryland Wiggins, sees a pitch from Simpson. They're going to have a meeting in the infield. trying to figure out who called this meeting and it looked like it was Vivi Martinez and it looks like she's the one doing the talking the shortstop you can see her right there talking to Simpson and to me that is more important to coach white to be honest than anything the growth of the freshman now a sophomore anchoring that position calling the timeout recognizing the moment that Simpson needs a little bit of a break and that is leadership development that's huge and you just wonder if she took that next step after her time wearing the red, white, and blue in that Japan All-Star Series. Base is loaded. Aggies are threatening to find their first lead of the night. At the same time, Sophia Simpson and Longhorns just need one out to get out of this jam with a run advantage still intact. Wiggins, the sixth batter of the inning. Hill, Ashte, and Harper, your runners. And we mentioned the Aggies have done well with two outs tonight, hitting four for seven collectively. And Mike White's going to make a change. So it'll be a fifth Longhorn pitcher inheriting bases loaded with two outs, hanging on to a one-run lead. As Mike White goes to the bullpen, and it's going to be a trip down memory lane. Mac Morgan will take the circle when you rejoin us. Oh, and did really well. She inherits bases loaded in a 2-0 count facing Ryland Wiggins. Clinging to a one-run lead for Texas. Oh, by the way, Mack also had a combined no-hitter in that regional against Seton Hall. Not sure which win will stand out most for her. Three and one. 
all three base runners reaching on free passes, two walks and a hit batter with two outs here in the sixth before the pitching change. In a one-run ball game, the 3-1. It's just fall softball on a Wednesday night in October. The count stays full. It is so loud right now. I can't get over this. I mean, I'm stressed for no reason at all. There's no reason to be stressed. I'm stressed. Wiggins, who has struck out twice tonight, seeing her second pitcher of just this at bat alone. And they'll keep the count full at least one more time. The one thing that Mac Morgan does is pound the zone. She throws hard with the velocity and she throws down in the zone, but she pumps strikes. And that's what you have to do, especially coming in with the 2 0 count. Eighth pitch of this at bat. Out of a jam. Mac Morgan finds the third out. Texas hangs on to the lead. Pop up to third base. Here we go, we may. Vivi Martinez. Probably the softest spoken vocal leader of a team. Called that meeting. Out there on the diamond in the midst of that last half inning. Tonight, two for two with an RBI and a run scored. for three. It just makes it look so easy. And of course, that's not her best hit that we've seen in the, of the night. We saw a double off the wall and turned on one earlier for a single, but just look at the numbers that she's been able to put up and of course, unanimous Big 12 selection for that freshman team. We talked about her development playing with Team USA over the summer. And to me, she's a player that I kind of keep my eye on her for a future you know, conference player of the year. She's that caliber of a, of a player. Whether which, that's Big 12 or SEC, yeah, I don't know. That's my question. <laughs> yet, to, yet to see. But she has the opportunity maybe to do both. I don't know. Here's Katie Stewart, started tonight at first. These days, she is your catcher. Find into a double play her last time up back in the third. 0 for 2 tonight. Can Texas reclaim some insurance here in the sixth? Was determined to get a bunt down. But could not track that one down in the opposite batter's box. Ryan Brown is on deck. One on, nobody out for Texas. Count stays at one and two. Love these matchups. You have a freshman against a, a super senior, a grad senior. Five years of difference. She's always just a little bit more unique to me when we get this matchup. And run on first, Vivi Martinez after her single. Stewart at the plate with a 2 2 count to her name, facing Shaley Ackerman. quite thought about a barehanded snag. When you have this matchup, it's not, you know, a talent difference to me. It's always the mental. The freshman versus the senior, and you always have more of an edge as a senior, especially a fifth year. You have so many games and so much knowledge under your belt, and then you kind of go to the flip side, the freshman, it's you're just wide-eyed, you're eager, you don't know anything different, don't know a scouting report on anyone. 
He's just trying to go out there and do it. The 2-2. What a snag by Powell. A chance for two. Got it. Bases wiped clean. 2 away. When you have an elite game like this, you're going to have elite defense. It's a 2-1 ball game for a reason. This right here, a big part of that. Kennedy Powell, I didn't even know she played third base going into this game. I thought she was just a second baseman and an outfielder, and we talked about how Trinity Cannon not in the lineup here. So you move, Wiggins over to second, Powell comes in at third, makes that play look so easy, and that was a hot shot. So again, first chance for Ryan Brown to swing a bat tonight. Part of this talented freshman class out of Thompson Station, Tennessee. And it's another home run threat to this program. We saw a couple of her classmates go deep in their last game against UTSA a couple weeks ago. This one on a rope, but able to show off the range as Enright held in right. Thanks to a double play, it's a three up, three down, bottom of the sixth, on to the seventh in a one run affair. It's Allie Enright who will lead things off. And she absolutely crushes this one, it's gone. Brand new bowl game, Allie Enright will touch them all. And let me correct myself, that's Ayana Coleman, the pride of College Station. Well, she came in so quick and swung at the first pitch, we don't even, even have time to look down at our scorecard. Yeah. And just for the pinch hitter, it just happened so quickly. But that is a way to come in and make an impact with one swing. She came in quick, it got out quicker. Well, I know what Texas A&M is thinking is, where was this swing in the last inning? They had the bases loaded. And this thing was a bomb. Opposite field. Clears the big, tall fence out there. Right off the top, it looked like. I mean, Ayanna Coleman from A&M Consolidated High School out of College Station. Now her second year suiting up for the hometown team. Had four of those home runs last year as a freshman. Little souvenir ball and a selfie. That's so cute. And for the first time since the bottom of the first, we are tied. So here is Allie Enright. <laughs> Just a moment ago, Texas A&M tying it up. Oh, look, Coach Harger at third base isn't even set. So I'm not even feeling bad about <laughs> not knowing who it was at the moment because everything just happened so quickly. Coach is running out there, but Coleman says, while you guys can figure it out, I'm going to jog around the bases. So a line to Martinez, able to squeeze it on the fly. Two away. Third baseman, Kennedy Powell. I feel like AM all night, though, has been very aggressive early in the count. Their, their hacks have been big, they've been intentional, and it just has taken a couple of innings for them to kind of get going. That a four-pitch inning. Texas, the home team tonight, will have a chance in the home half of the seventh to walk this one off. For the most part, limited to being a pinch hitter for the remainder of her time here in Austin after a knee injury. Batting for Alyssa Washington. Well, I know if this feels like a walk-off type of moment with Coach White putting in the big hitter and Whitaker, whose her role is to go in there and mash. 
I hope I don't jinx her by saying this, but Brooke Festel is a pitcher that really doesn't give up a lot of home runs in her career. So this is a good matchup for Texas A&M. Whitaker, this one off the handle, stays playable. Out number one. Coco Woolley able to track it down. Vestal throwing 58, 60 miles an hour, and it's just pretty much curved to both sides and spins that ball so tight. And because of that spin, she's able to keep hitters so off balance. She has done it her entire career at Old Miss. And you kind of feel like this moment is so revved up. And so what does Coach Ford do? Well, she puts in her, her slowest pitcher, but it's, it's for a reason. It's to kind of get hitters out in front who maybe are too revved up. And it's sometimes hard as a hitter to provide the power yourself. You hit off a pitcher like Ackerman or Kennedy or Gutierrez or Mac Morgan, and you don't really have to do too much as a hitter. And when you see Brooke Vessel who's slowing it down, sometimes that plays tricks on hitters. Mike White going with another pinch hitter here, Vanessa Kidroga. In the regional against the Aggies in those two games, she was one for two with three walks. Right now, level count, one ball, one strike. Batting in the seven hole for Simas, the DP. going to do any favors for Bestel there. I like the theme from both sides as well. We're seeing so many defensive players and pinch hitting opportunities. Both teams have utilized both their whole staffs as a whole. We've seen every single pitcher possible. That's what this is all about. 2-1 from Vestal. Just cannot convince Giroga to chase. Yeah, she's working that backdoor curve righty on lefty matchup, and she's just kind of missing her arm slot, throwing a little bit too much off of, off of her hip. And the ball's kind of drifting too far to the right. Aggies tied up in the top of the seventh. And the count goes full with one out to the pinch hitter, Kiroga, who represents the winning run. Now, my question is, if there is a walk-off, are we calling it? Because in fall ball, you just never know. Well, There's just I, different rules. I want to point out, we were probably going to see a bottom of the seventh regardless of whether right. the Aggies scored in the top. But right. all of a sudden, it feels a little bit different. Do we end in a tie? It's TBD. We'll find out with you guys. I just think these are the only two teams in the country who would not allow it to end in a tie. That's a fair ball off the glove of Powell, able to recover in time to a win. She was not flummoxed by an initial miscue with the glove. Yeah, we've seen her make a couple of good plays over there at third base, getting it off the transition from the ball on the ground to throwing it across the diamond. So key just by a half step. Another pinch hitter for Texas. It's Bailey Brandon, former LSU Tiger, hit 300 last year with the Longhorns. Two outs, nobody on, trying to be the first base runner to reach since Vestal has come up. One zero. -oh. That's it for the bottom of the seventh. As we look around for any sign of whether or not softball continues, that will do it. Punctuation. And they're going to have to let it linger until 2025. Oh, man. These, these fans are going to be on the edge of their seats until February because that was a phenomenal softball game from Texas and Texas A&M. We're talking fall ball in October, and that's the product on the field that we just watched. <laughs>
रिकॉर्डिंग स्टूडियो सिमरा